Well, it all started two Thanksgivings ago when my friends and I decided to go up and visit Alice at the restaurant, but no, actually it started late Sunday morning in the wee hours. I got up to use the toilet and what did I find but a big puddle of water on the floor there. And I went to YouTube and I, I asked YouTube how to fix an old toilet. And when it came to removing the old and replacing the new, there wasn't a decent, a decent example on how to really do it. So I decided that I would come home from the uh, plumbing store and make my own YouTube video on how to remove and replace an old toilet And I just made that up. So you see if you might want to watch the rest of it over there on my YouTube channel. And I don't know about you, but my life always seems to go sideways at the least opportune moment. Because I'm trying to get ready to leave for Ireland and then on to uh, Sweden to deliver that guitar to Emil Ennebro and that guitar to Shane Hennessy. But Sunday, I went without. And Monday, I went out and picked up a new toilet. I... Uh, tore the old one out, threw it in the garbage can, and there's pickup tomorrow morning on Wednesday, and uh, did a dry fit after I got the old one out of there. And I'm going to tell you, it was horrendous. And so I'm just going to uh, bring you up to speed. The problem was there's a real high point back here and a very low point over here and when I put the level on it front to back it was it was it was like this and when you put the level on it like that it was like this again the high point is back here and it's exceptionally low in this corner see if we can see it back there oh i know i'm set up for doing a, a a sensible youtube video on anybody that wants to replace the toilet so see you got my studio light and i'll be uh filming from my tripod in a minute that i got for my trip to the eu so i can film the guitar players see how it hits right there and the other problem is the flange is below the floor here. It's level with the floor over on this side. So the big problem with this existing flange is that it is a uh, half inch below this back corner and ends up being flush with this side and that big gap. So, um, I'm a carpenter and a former design build contractor, been in the building business for 40 years, so I don't use plastic shims. I just get my wood shims out that we use for setting the doors. And I got it <clears throat> good front to back. And I got it good side to side. Now, I'll show you my next step. So I don't know if I mentioned that um, I got that tripod and it came with a little remote so I can shut the video on and off with a push of a button. So that's cool. And that's the other reason why I figured I'd make try to make a decent video on how to stick in a <coughs> brand new toilet on a crab orchard stone that's really uneven, unlevel. So, just double checking, 
I'm perfect front to back. I'm perfect side to side. And then you got to get your Shear Brothers pencil um, from the lumber yard and go around the perimeter and mark a nice clean line. And I'm going to even number them left to right. One, two, three, four. Because you never will know what's going to happen. Now that guarantees I'm going to get it set perfectly level. Now I'm going to pop it off and uh, show you what the big problem was. And uh, that's next. Okay, these things are heavy enough for a 70-year-old grandfather of 10, so you always want to take the rag and the target bags out before you uh, lift it off. And, oh, Martha. There we go. Now, it's much lighter without the uh, bag in the bowl. Now you can see this back corner, if I level, I got it. I got the good eye. That's a half inch. And so what are we going to do with that? Well, let me go show you what I got from my good buddy, Bert, like plumbing salesman of the year at Menards. And he helped me out so much. I turned to him before I walked away and said, Bert, you can have the rest of the day off with pay and you can tell Uncle John Menards I said so. Okay, so what you see all over YouTube is if you've got an uneven floor or you've got a flange that's low, and I got both, you, you want to get the PVC flange spacer kit, which I got. I've got another one to do downstairs that I'm going to replace before it cracks. It's 41 years old, too. Okay, so, and then I saw everything from building this up to... Here was a uh, really a choice one it was uh, get plaster of Paris and put it all around here and then set it on that while you're trying to get your new rack swing in here on your elevated this that and the other thing. But Bert has this. It says one and done. Easiest to install, deepest seal. So I am going to think that with all of that cush, you can just stick it on the flange like it is. And like they say, it's one and it's done. Okay, there's that. There's that. Don't you love this packaging? I, you should always have gloves on, but I don't. You can really hurt yourself. Okay, there's caps and there's our bolts and here's some other gizmos. We'll see. Okay, so before I get too much further with that, I want to see how this, so that fits. Let's see. So let's check this out. Yep. Yep. That's the old bolts I had just for the dry fit. But I'll take those out. And then we'll put a couple of these in according to specifications. And you know what else with these? When they're long, they send you a little diamond um, rope saw. So how about that? Okay. But before I get any further on this... I want to make sure it, uh, how this uh, business end fits on the dad gum potty. Let's see if I can do two things at one time. And, oh, look at that. It's just like a perfect little hug. Perfect little hug on this shoulder, watch. Oh. 
That's better than a sharp stick in the eye, like we say on the job site. Okay, now there's my B instructions. And aren't they 21st century? Okay, so here's the flange. You got to get the lock nut on top. Right? Uh, here's what I like. Your flange can be eighth inch higher than the floor and no lower than an inch and a half. And this little springy thing, where is it? I don't have it here. But you know, it'll adjust this part right here. It's like a shock absorber, up or down. Okay, so I just shot a bunch of video in the bathroom about me trying to figure out the bits and parts. And I'm here to say that I'm cutting all that video out and encouraging you, if you want to try this thing, is to just put the QR code on your phone and it says with a toilet already removed. Watch that. It'll show you how to do the whole thing. And... Now that I've sat down and watched the video, which I should have done first, I've got the confidence it's going to go smooth and I'll probably get the downstairs uh, toilet removed and replaced. Boom. All right, from the wall, I got the uh, center of the bolts marked right and left sides. Draw a straight line across there, left to right, and... Uh, that's where the bolts got to go. All right. Now, um, it says just uh, drill some holes and uh, drive in these screws, uh, the new flange into the old uh, PVC. But just because I'm nerdy, I am going to put a, uh, a light bead of silicone all around this outside here because it surely can't hurt anything okay and another benefit I'm just thinking about when um, about putting a light bead of caulk around here is while I go down to the shop and get my drill uh, and driver for uh, those screws That'll uh, set up, get a little tacky, and it won't uh, wiggle around while I'm uh, drilling holes. Okay, so I drilled and drove two screws partway just to kind of get that flange pinned before I drive anything home. And then double check my distance from the wall is equal. So the toilet is going to be perpendicular to the wall and both uh, bolts are parallel with the back wall. Okay, so that's that. I um, I got this funny feeling that I'm trying to um, imagine how it could be that easy so it's a matter of uh, taking the bowl sticking it over those bolts I'm gonna get these back you can see why I wanted to put a pencil mark on you can I can see the outline of the old potty okay let's give it a whirl oh did I say oh Martha I think I said that already I should have my headlamp on. I could see the bolts. In fact, I'm going to do that. Hang on. 
old Martha three times. Yeah. Wow. You'll never see those bolts in that hole if you don't have your headlamp on. It goes up there somewhere. This is where I started up front. Let's see where we are. Back to front. I like that. This way, so it's rocky. So it wants to, wants to. I'm gonna change that a little bit. Okay, no rocks. Level side to side. Level front to back. And, okay, so look at this. What did I, you know, it's, how can it be this easy? No washers, no wrenches, just finger tight and one quarter turn. Stick your cap in times two. Okay, so before I cut those bolts off and put the caps on, I am going to uh, check check it for leaks before I hook up the water supply. Um, not because it's in the directions, but just like the caulking on the outside of the uh, flange, I'm going to pour a bucket of water down there just because I can. Okay, here's my five gallon pail I used for. Whoa, it made a flush. Okay, did I say that's better than a sharp stick in the eye? I'll let it sit there a minute. I was just concerned about getting that little shock absorber to, you know, get around the uh, hub, that shoulder on the bottom of the, but I must have hit it just right. Okay, so I uh, pushed a little paper towel back under there where I could to um, check for leaks and dry as a bone. So um, it's been sitting there while I've been prepping the tank. I got the tank and the gasket that... Um, Going to fit down right there. Two tank bolts on either side. And what else I got? Water supply to hook up. Did you notice I had a plastic glove over that to keep the crummies out of it? Here are the uh, tank bolts, and I got a little special tool for tightening them. Uh, and washers and caps. Here's my tank cover. And this is kind of cool. I got a push button flush. And you can push, can push one button for high capacity. Push the other button for low capacity. See how that works. It's maybe something else to go wrong. And then we'll put the toilet seat on. Okay. The tank is on. Tank bolts are down till the tank doesn't wobble. <clears throat> water supply is hooked up and doesn't leak 
the uh, water supply valves wide open and we got the tank full of water no leaks around the uh, tank bolts or washers and this is cool I got a low flush and a high flush okay we'll put the tank lid cover on let's try a big flush there you go no leaks at the bolt at the water supply nor at the flange i got the little blue shock absorber just right evidently I am still not going to cut those bolts off until I get the seat on and use it for a few days and still make sure there's no leaks. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut those bolts off. Uh, I'm going to cut the shims off now. I'll come back to that. Okay, I got the seat with the nice uh, slow self-closer that works uh, great unless you have grandchildren in the house. And I am gonna go down and get my multi-tool now and cut those shims off. Okay. You uh, want your ear protection on for this job. thing I should mention is I'm not going to count on these shims to uh, hold that toilet uh, level over the long haul. As soon as I'm uh, happy next week that the, uh, that, uh, the bowl is not leaking from underneath, I'm going to come back with a uh, thin set and grout under here all the way. And around over here, look at this big gap here. Where is it? Oh, there she blows. Yeah, I'll fill that with a thin set and that'll be rock solid. And it'll match the, uh, the uh, mason cement grout joints I've got on the crab orchard floor here. Boom. Happy plumbing. Okay. This concludes my uh, YouTube video. And hopefully somebody will find it useful. I have uh, gone around and caulked the shims to the top up the top of the shim to the bottom of the toilet rim all the way around and then I if it looks wet that's not leaking that's just a little leftover mineral spirits that you want to clean that silicone up with in a hurry um, <clears throat> I got a shop towel under the water supply to uh, check and in, in the morning see if that um, Supply line is still holding and not leaking. We'll keep an eye on the uh, tank bolts. And of course, see if that uh, nice little blue, what I call it, a shock absorber in lieu of a wax wing. And, uh, you know, by the end of the week, if I'm happy with it, looks like it's going to work, I'll cut those bolts off and uh, finish it off. In the meantime, happy plumbing.